Hey, what's going on guys? John Shea here from the No Shame Income blog. And today I've actually got an interesting topic I wanted to talk about. And this has really just come to light in an idea of mine. I wanted to create this video because really over the last probably about three to four weeks, I've had to spend a significant amount of time looking into helping both of my parents move into an assisted living home. So this is something that I wanted to really kind of cover for those of you who might be, you know, trying to learn more about this, like what do you do when it comes time to actually move your parents into a place and how do you take over their finances? How do you, you know, do all the things that need to be done? So I had to spend a lot of time over the last several weeks literally figuring out all these things from scratch, talking with family members, lawyers, doctors, and just trying to understand what is the next best move for all of this. So I actually organized a lot of this into some documents and I've decided to make some blank templates that I wanna walk you guys through today in this video, kind of give you a, a full walkthrough of everything that you might need to know when it comes time to move your family into a nursing home or an assisted living facility. And you are the one that's going to be taking over their finances and really just um, helping them, you know, as they kind of progress in life, right? This is something that for many of us, we're all going to have to deal with at some point. And I thought, hey, why not create a video about this, share some insight around what I'm doing, what's working for me, and give you guys an idea of how much time I've had to dedicate to doing some of these things and help you guys organize a lot of these things for those of you who may not know, you know, what is it that I need to do to actually be able to accomplish some of these things. In my case, um, unfortunately, my father came diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease about four years ago. We started to really see symptoms and year after year, the disease has progressively gotten worse. My father used to be someone that would do the taxes every year. He was paying all the bills. He was the guy that would go out and run a lot of the errands for the household. And while my mother was working and supporting the family, she was never really the go-to person to do a lot of this. So I think what's really happened in my family because of my father's symptoms, this is something that is definitely progressed quite a bit and I've actually needed to come in and kind of take over a lot of things that weren't being done. So I'm really creating this video as a way to help, you know, those of you who maybe could end up in a situation like this one day if you have a family member or a parent that ends up in a situation where they could have something like this or be in a state where they just cannot take care of themselves any longer, this should help you um, you know, with that whole process. So with that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, again, most of the videos I create are usually about generating income, but I am trying to do things around finances and just general life lifestyle videos, things that I'm dealing with in my own life and trying to share things that are actually helpful for others. So be sure to throw me a thumbs up on the video if you guys like this content and uh, don't forget to subscribe, like this video. And if you wanna leave a comment below, um, feel free to ask questions on anything that I talk about in today's video. So with that all being said, let's jump over to my desktop and I'm gonna walk you guys through kind of a plan I put together for doing all of this. All right, so we're over on my desktop and as I mentioned, you know, there was a kind of a strategic way I wanted to go about planning all of this. And again, I wanted to be as helpful as possible, but I've decided to, you know, remove a lot of things obviously from these documents because really for privacy reasons and just so I'm not giving you guys literally the full story of everything that's going on, but you're going to have enough walking away from this video that you should know, you know, here are some things that I need to be looking out for when it comes time that you actually have to take over for you know, your own parents' financial situation or their living situation, whatever it may be. So the way that I broke this down and to give a little bit more background, I had actually had a good friend of my mother's that had known me since I was literally a little baby, was working with my mother to help pay off debts, um, get more in control of some different things that just hadn't been getting taken care of. And she had actually hit a point where she kind of hit a wall and it said, you know what, I really need to bring John into this and get him more involved. So I actually went and sat down with her and met with her. She had quite a bit of notes of different things that were going on. And, you know, you probably wouldn't really think about this in reality. But if you look at someone else's life and you're picking up potentially years of everything that's been going on from all the different bills and services and um, any debts that may be incurred, uh, financial money that's been stored away. There's a lot that really comes into play with all of this. So I decided to first make kind of a generalized list and prioritize this from what's most important to um, kind of least important. And eventually what I ended up doing is actually creating more of a to-do list, and I'll show you that next, where I break down all the different things that I need to do and track all of them so I know what's going on, what's been completed, 
And if I need to reference things like phone numbers or notes, then I'd be able to have that at my disposal. So the very first thing uh, when it comes to, you know, really taking over your parents' situation here with moving and just financials is you're going to need to meet with a lawyer and you're gonna to have to get what's called a power of attorney. So I kept some of my brief notes here when I spoke with my mother's friend when we initially started talking about all this, realizing that this was something we needed to do. And I said, hey, I need to meet with a lawyer in person. Um, we need to discuss what's called the power of attorney. And what this would do is basically allow me to um, take control of all of their finances. And I'm gonna show you guys a little sample of the first page of what this looks like. So you can see here's one that um, I photocopied. It basically says that um, my mother of this town appoints me to be um, as my lawful attorney to act for me in my name. And then some of the examples of things that I could do could be investing or reinvesting in stocks, borrowing money, endorsing transfers of certificates of stock, represent me and vote in my name. Basically, I'm able to take over and act as an entity on behalf of my mother and my father with this power of attorney. And in this case, I got a durable power of attorney. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't recommend to you whether or not you need to get a durable power of attorney or just a general power of attorney, but um, or even doing this at all in general. But definitely what you're going to want to do is speak with an elder care attorney about all of this. And this is going to basically allow you to have permissions to handle a lot of these things without your parents being involved. So very, very important. The next part of all of this was figuring out what was going on with taxes. In my parents' case, there was some lapse on when they had actually last paid taxes. So I had to come in and kind of make a list of all the things that I needed. And the easiest way to approach this is to just kind of make a list of the generalized things that they're looking for. And in my cases, you know, in my case, both of my parents are on social security and my father receives a teacher's pension. So I was looking for social security W-2s or 1099s, looking for what's called the 1099G, which was something you would get from prior year refunds. Any other 1099s like I have, this is a social security one. Any interest 1099s, like if they were accumulating interest from banks or savings accounts, things like that. My father, because he's retired as a school teacher, he would actually get what's called this 1099R, and that might not be uh, applicable, applicable to your scenario, but as well as looking at mortgage interest statements um, and just looking for anything in terms of like potential refunds. Now, in my case, I thought that I was actually going to have to call the IRS and potentially wait on hold for what possibly could be hours. But in my case, what I ended up doing is actually going and calling um, specifically Social Security and also calling um, my, my father's teacher's pension association. And I was able to have them get a copy of the power of attorney. Once they had that, um, I was able to then move forward by getting printed out versions that they would then mail to my parents' address that they had on file so that I'd have all that information. And this, is, of course, is only necessary if this documentation was lost or was just never filed. So let's say you're looking for tax documents from a year ago, um, you might be in a scenario where you just simply can't find them and this is gonna be one of the only ways you can get them. So that's a big thing. Obviously, you do wanna make sure you take care of any taxes or things like that and that that is one of the biggest priorities that you take care of before anything else. The next thing that I decided to do was actually meet with my father's doctor as well as my mother's doctor and just get a full update on everything that's kind of going on based on what they've done in terms of what prescriptions are they prescribing? Um, what do they recommend? Do they believe that it's time for them to say move into an assisted living facility? Um, what is kind of the overall outcome of, you know, where they see things moving forward? And also making sure that they also have power of attorney documents so that I never have an issue when it comes to speaking with them. If I wanted to call and talk to the doctor on my own without my parents being there, I would have the ability to do that without any restrictions. I also wanted to look into healthcare, figure out what exactly are they on for health insurance, and also determining if your parents are over 65, which if you're looking into this, they most likely are, is that do you have, um, do they have healthcare through Medicare? And typically the way that this works is Medicare covers a portion of anything that's done for um, any kind of medical service, doctor's visits, and anything that Medicare does not cover will then get um, moved into a secondary provider. And in this case, um, my father and mother had what's called Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. So if they went to a doctor's visit and something was not covered under Medicare, or only a portion of it was covered under Medicare, Harvard Pilgrim would pick up the remainder of that bill and then they would be left with whatever's owed as a copay. So this is all stuff that you definitely wanna get your head wrapped around. In my case as well, I live in Massachusetts and they have what's called MassHealth. Your state, it's obviously going to vary. 
but you may want to look into you know what's available there and depending on um, what you have from state to state you know in my case my parents would not have qualified for this because of the assets and financial um, you know funds that they have saved so Medicare and the other insurance that they do get um, is basically the coverage that they have the next thing I wanted to look at was their living situation right so in my case my parents about six years ago had downgraded from a fairly large size, like four bedroom, two bath home, to a smaller townhome that was like about probably 1,300 to 1,400 square feet, had two bedrooms, actually three bathrooms, very oddly, but it was a nicer unit, just not as big, not as much maintenance. And I realized even living in that home, they weren't able to keep up because of the, the state that they were getting into as they got older, they weren't able to keep up with the maintenance and just all the things needed. So. Really, you've got a few different options in terms of living. You can look at senior housing, which is something usually provided to a specific city. Um, generally, it's considered independent living. And in most cases, for someone that might be battling something like Alzheimer's, that probably isn't gonna be ultimately where you wanna go. I did find when looking at senior housing options, many of them had extensive wait lists. One of them even told me there was a four year wait list just to get into the senior housing. But beyond that, you're really looking at one of a few other options, and that would be a nursing home. That's really the highest end of where you're gonna need. You need someone that is basically tending to your parent or parents for 24 seven. Um, this is something where it's gonna take a lot of time uh, commitment and generally these are going to be the most expensive options. The next option down is assisted living facilities and most of these facilities do not have any coverage through health insurance. Um, basically this is all out-of-pocket pay and the options that I looked at we looked at about four of these. I did two up where I live and then two where I used to live in a smaller city about 45 minutes from where I'm living now and all of them really start around the same range of costs. You're looking at probably about $4,500 a month on the low end, and something on that very, very low end is gonna be like a studio. It's literally like a small hotel room, and in general, you could be sharing things, like maybe you've got a shared um, mini fridge or a sink, like out in a hallway with another unit that could be adjacent to you. Most of the units, although generally, would be starting around $6,000 a month. That was kind of the, the general area where you'd find these to be priced at. And then in addition to that, to have a family um, you know, spouse move in with them. So in this case, if my father was there and getting the base fee, let's say, the, let's say it was $5,800, in addition to having my mother come in and live with him in that same unit, they would charge anywhere from 500 upwards of $1,700 in additional um, to have them move in as a second person. Now, the assisted living facilities generally work in a few, uh, couple of different ways. You have the opportunity where they could be basically offering you your cleaning, your um, doing all your laundry, they're feeding you every day, they have like an area that you go into, like a restaurant, you order food every day, and that was essentially what you're getting. It's like all inclusive. And that was kind of the base level. You then can kind of move up to a second level where they start to add hours, and those hours can go towards other things that dedicate you know, a lot more time and commitment to helping people. So this could be help with like bathing, showering, you know, um, making sure that they're getting dressed properly, things that are gonna offer, you know, require more time commitment. Usually the base level of most of these facilities would offer that for about five hours. And then if you went over that five hour limit, you would actually have to pay um, potentially even like per the minute, one place wanted like 60 something cents per minute. And in a lot of cases, many of them have an option where you could go up to like 20 hours in a given um, week or in a given month. And that's where you know they're really getting a lot more care and monitoring. The other thing with the assisted living facilities is in many cases, it was one of two living scenarios where um, people are kind of free to roam, they're more independent, they could leave the building at any time. If they wanted to walk out at 10 o'clock, and go drive down the street somewhere, they have that option. But many of the units also had what's called a memory care unit. So what the memory care unit does that's different is that they have a padlock door with a, a special passcode and people cannot just freely come and go as they please. And this is really more for people that might be in a situation with dementia or, or Alzheimer's where you know they don't want people just getting up in the middle of the night and like walking out the front of the front door of the building or roaming around and like knocking on people's doors because they're just unaware of their surroundings and what's going on. So this was probably one of the biggest things is really determining between those levels, but the memory care generally ranges even more in cost and starts closer to between eight and nine thousand dollars a month. 
Now, if you consider nursing homes as the, the next level above that, um, and you're getting more 24 seven care, I believe those can range anywhere from 10,000 upwards of $30,000 a month. The difference between these two is that nursing homes, depending on your financial situation, can have some coverage through um, health insurance. But most likely this isn't going to kick in unless you literally have no assets left, any savings at all, and maybe the house is just completely gone and sold off and literally there's no money left to be had whatsoever. The other option on all this would be independent living facilities. So I found a place, and this is actually the option that I went with, where both my mother and father are going to be living in basically an independent living boarding house. So it's basically like almost like a small mansion where they only have up to six people, six elderly people that live there. And then there's two people that live there 24 seven on the upstairs portion of the, of the building that do all of their cleaning, laundry, and they cook all of their meals. They do not do things like helping them with bathing, showering, medications, you know, um, helping them get dressed, all these other things where they may need a lot more extra intensive care. It's mostly just helping them with meals and making sure that they're living in a clean environment and their laundry is being done on a consistent basis. Now, if you wanted to go this option, the way that I've looked at this is that I could have a nurse, an in-home nurse coming in to help with those things such as getting dressed or taking showers. And that's really where some of this stuff starts to potentially add up but ultimately may end up being less money than what you might pay for an assisted living facility. The downside of the independent living facilities though is that they don't have like regular activities, um, there's less socialization, obviously with there only being six people, give or take maybe living in a building like this, you're not gonna have the same kind of interactions or social environment that you might in an assisted living facility where there could be over 50 tenants and then of course um, could be potentially over 20 employees working throughout one of these larger buildings. So these are just things to kind of weigh out and I wanted to give you guys all of these options to think about. The next thing that I wanted to tackle, and in my case, my parents still had some debt that needed to be taken care of. So uh, in this case, they had a personal loan that we needed to get rid of from one of their banks. We had money that was owed on a car. Um, we obviously still owed money on a mortgage from the house that they're living in. Uh, my mother had purchased hearing aids a few years ago and those were still being paid on monthly payments and there were various credit cards that still needed to be paid off as well. So you really need to kind of figure out what are all the debts that they still have remaining, if any at all, and figure out what still needs to be paid off. And ultimately what you're going to have to do is call up these financial institutions and tell them, hey, I have the power of attorney, what is the process for getting this to you? Usually they're gonna tell you one of three options. You're gonna to have to either fax it into them, which in my case, um, I have a PDF copy of it so I could send that, there are some free online services that you can look at for sending um, faxes for free. Some of them might put like a watermark, but that's probably gonna be your best bet. I did find one service that lets me send up to like 10 pages for free and then you have to pay for it after that. But generally that would be the way to go. And some of the institutions, I physically had to go into a branch in one case, like a bank that they had a credit card with. I had to physically go sit down with them and give them the paperwork in person. And in most cases, most of the companies will provide you with an email. And if you have a scanner, you could make copies of that power of attorney and just send them an email like the one that I showed you. And then immediately they'll be willing to talk with you and kind of move forward on everything that needs to happen. Now, in my case, um, because I'm selling their home, I also had to go through lots of paper and just things that maybe were lingering around that hadn't been taken care of. And partly this was due to the dementia and Alzheimer's symptoms, things that just maybe weren't being taken care of. So what I decided to do is look through literally every single shred of paper that I could find in their house. I even found um, my old receipt from the Sega Genesis that my parents bought for me in 1993. That's literally how far back I was going, going through every single piece of paper that I could find just lingering around in drawers, desks, anything that may be lingering around depending on how your parents are organizational wise. My parents just so happened to not be the most organized people so they had a lot of papers all over the place so I had to go through and just sit here sifting through every single document making sure you know is this something that needs to be shredded is this something that I need to save and just going through all of this. Now in my case I found some unpaid parking tickets. I found that they had an upcoming excise tax bill for their car. Um, I had a toll bill from a toll from 2017 that just 
you know, got like left behind that was $8 that turned into a $100 bill. So these are all things that I highly recommend taking care of. Medical bills that maybe had not been paid. And then beyond that, um, you know, I made notes of anything else here. I actually had to add another line. In my case, my sister was in a position where she actually needed to get her own car and my parents came to an agreement where they would pay for her car. So with this being said, I wanted to get something affordable but decent, and I ended up finding her a Ford Explorer 2005 with 140,000 miles on it for about 2,600 bucks. I also highly recommend if you are in a situation where maybe you're even going to sell their existing car, get them a replacement car, that when you do do that, just 100% make sure if you're buying something a little bit older or less, in, you know, less um, expensive than say a, a new car or a leased car, that you do have it inspected by someone other than the, the company selling you the car, the dealership selling you the car, and that way you're not getting into something where you're gonna have to owe more money for repairs or other surprises that could creep up around the corner. Some of the other things that I had to get were a dumpster. In this case, I have a dumpster coming to their home so we can remove all the old things that are there. I decided to switch their car insurance to a company, Progressive, which I'm familiar with because that was my own insurance provider. They had their own um, car insurance and I decided to move off of that company and switch over to my own. Another thing that I did is as I went through all of these papers and documents and everything, I basically organized everything by category. So if I had gas bills, I would make a, a folder for you know gas documents or the gas company name. Electric bills, I'd have another one for receipts, anything that I purchased, anything for medical for my mother, medical for my father. I would literally make folders for all these different things. And if you go on Amazon, you can actually get um, it's basically like 15 bucks. You could get a little tray. Um, in fact, I have it here, but it's com not completely organized yet, so I'm not going to show it. But um, it's basically 15 bucks. It's just a little metal holder tray that you can grab and you can pick up and easily move around. Or you could get a nice filing cabinet and just have somewhere that you can keep all of these files and store them. So you, if you ever need to reference anything, you have that. In my case, um, I wanted to think about anything that I was gonna be moving for my parents. And in this case, things become quite limited. So um, they really only were bringing a few things, a bed frame, a mattress, a few bureaus. They had like three of them that they wanted to keep, which will fit in the room that they're moving into. And then we were basically moving clothes and that's it. Like they're not taking anything else. So we had to really think almost like a minimalist as to what was coming with them and what's gonna be coming along for this entire journey. And they had an older bed frame. So I actually decided to order a bed frame, have it sent to the new place that they're gonna be living in. And I can go assemble it ahead of time so that when they move, um, all we're gonna have to do is set up the mattress and they'll be basically good to go to start sleeping there. Um, the only other thing I could think of would be like end tables. You know, in my case, my parents had very old end tables that we probably will replace. But other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot that they needed to bring beyond clothes because everything else is going to be taken care of for them. In terms of the house itself, obviously now you're at a point where you need to think about selling their old home, right? Like, what do you do? In my case, I purchased my first home that I live in now, but I had never sold a home. I had done a lot of repairs around my own house, so I had a pretty good idea of what needed to be done. But this was another really important thing that you, you know, really want to think about when it comes to um, the next steps. They've moved out. In this case, you now have this empty home that you can just come in and figure out, okay, what are the next steps so I can get this house sold? So the first thing I did was I wanted to determine, you know, how much is left in terms of principal payments on the mortgage. And in this case, um, my parents were actually in a really good scenario where if we do sell the house, similar homes in the area for this particular townhome were selling between 250,000 and 320,000. I would just do your due diligence and kind of look at other similar area homes and see what the median price range is. And that'll give you some idea in addition to also speaking with a real estate agent. Now, in my case, they lived in one of these communities where they have a real estate agent that deals with all of these um, townhome communities and houses. So I just went to her, had her come by, review the property while I was there, and just get an idea of everything that needs to be done before this. So the first thing is obviously getting rid of all that trash. I already talked about getting a dumpster. I'm getting the biggest one that you can get. And we're just going to throw away pretty much everything that they're not taking with them, which is probably about 90% of what's there. The next thing was hiring a moving company or a getting a family member that has a truck. 
And luckily, since we're not moving a whole lot and most things are getting thrown away, I do recommend just finding someone that's like a close family member that has a larger truck where you could just load these things in and ultimately make one to two trips so it saves you a lot of time and money as opposed to hiring a moving company. The next thing was figuring out what is it that needs to be fixed in the home. So I had a bunch of electrical issues. There were like light fixtures that were old and dated, didn't have like covers on them, um, bulbs that were blown out, electrical outlets that didn't work. All of these things, I highly recommend just having a professional electrician come in and basically going through all of this stuff and determining what's wrong. We had to replace probably about four outlets, three different light fixtures, one of the house fans like didn't have like a working pull string. Um, there were cabinets in the house also that had broken hinges. And of course there was areas that needed even more attention. In this case, our upstairs flooring in the house um, was in pretty rough shape in terms of the carpets. They really needed to be ripped out. And of course, once I had the dumpster in there, I could throw everything away, get the, get the carpets done, and um, ultimately not have to deal with people being there while all this is happening, as well as all the furniture being in the way or being something that I had to put back after the fact. The other thing was obviously paint, right? If you had areas that need to be painted, I would hire a professional painter um, get a quote for all the different rooms. If there was paint that was in good condition, what you could potentially do is have some of that paint removed from the drywall and you know, basically a piece of the drywall with the paint on it, have them take that to a local paint store. They could scan and kind of look at the color of that paint and ultimately figure out what that color is so that way you could go around and have someone just patch holes, fix the paint as is without necessarily repainting entire rooms and spending lots of money to do tons and tons of fresh paint. Um, of course, this really depends. You definitely want to make sure you've got some more neutral colors because that's what's going to ultimately help the place sell a little bit easier versus like more complex, like darker colors. The other thing to look at was plumbing and septic, you know, making sure like, do the toilets work? Are, you know, is everything like up to date in terms of code? Um, are, are all of these things taken care of? And you have to think about if a home inspector comes in, are they going to notice these things and, and pick on them? before you know the sale of the house. So if you get all this stuff taken care of, I mean, I found out like one of the toilet seats like was broken where the screws attach on the back. So it may be small, right? But I had to order a new toilet seat because that's something that clearly someone will find during a home inspection. The other thing is I highly recommend saving all of the receipts from everything that's being done in the home. So all of this work, you wanna make sure you save receipts and determine when you go to work with an accountant on taxes, that you make sure that um, if there's any tax implementations uh, on the sale of the house, that all of this is kind of wrapped together. Um, now that pretty much concludes it from the house side of things. The other thing that I did, and this kind of wraps back into the finances and the debt, was determining all of their monthly expenses. So for me, I really didn't have like a full understanding in, in this case of what my parents owed on everything, but the most basics of things would be internet, TV, you know, in this case they were using Comcast, um, they had property insurance on the home. They were paying a gas bill. They obviously pay the mortgage, which I didn't have here. Um, they pay a condo fee, which includes um, some basic things like maintenance and care. Um, they were also paying for food every month, which now would not become a non-expense. And then electric electricity for the house as well. So beyond that, it's really just figuring out, you know, what are some of the other things that they could have been paying for? Does your parents have a subscription to Amazon Kindle, right? And figuring out all of these things. I found out my mother had a subscription to Sirius Radio and this was something that like she just didn't use and they were paying like 10 or $15 a month for it. So these were things that I had to add to my list to call them on her behalf and go and just cancel and get rid of because it was literally a waste of money. The final things when coming in all this was looking at investments. So what I did is I went through and I looked at all the investments and in this case, they were working with an investment um, person that had basically taken their money and invested it. They would earn a percentage on any of the investments that they made. And once I provided to them the power of attorney documents, I was able to do the same thing where I could come in and basically figure out what they had. So in this case, my parents had a couple of annuities, which are a form of a savings account. They had some stocks that were being invested. My mother had a 401k from her old job that she had rolled over. And then I had to check through all their bank and checking and savings accounts, as well as I wanted to speak with another financial person and get feedback on how all these investments were being managed. Another thing that you should never really go into this stuff and think that it's going to be like 100% A-OK -okay would be to get a second opinion because you don't know if you're coming into this for the first time and you don't really know this financial person, 
it might be worthwhile to go and speak with someone else from another financial institution and give them documentation about everything that you have to figure out, you know, was were these accounts being managed? Were they making the best investments in terms of what they could have been doing? Was this stuff really being paid attention to? And in my case, I found out that the person working on it, I don't think was doing any harm, but wasn't being very aggressive. And my parents, of course, were not very involved in the way that the accounts and the money was being managed. So was there opportunity to make more on those investments? Absolutely, there was. So I actually went and met with a representative, another independent agent from Edward Jones, and found out that, hey, there is more opportunity of things that we could be doing and paying attention to, and I'm actually going to be moving all of their assets to a different financial person and basically starting from scratch. Now, in this case, I'm not taking any of the money, but what I was doing is setting my mother up for a situation where she'd be more prepared as well as my father, and both me and my sister hopefully having some money left over when the time comes that they both pass away and there's a will, you know, we basically can take over from all of this and have the opportunity to basically keep some of this money for ourselves so that we can, you know, use that in our own lives. The last thing I had to check into was the car situation, right? Do they have one car, do they have two cars? And really looking into car insurance, finding out how much they were paying for insurance, what's owed, do they have a car loan, how much is left on that car loan, and all this built in, right? So again, as you build out all this, this is kind of going to be your high level overview. And of course, you're going to have a lot more notes in here. You could come in here and basically do something like this and say, okay, this is, you know, XYZ nursing home. This is what they cost. I toured them. You could add lots of notes and this is going to be a way for you to keep track of that. But as you move forward, I highly, highly recommend creating a task list. So this is what I ended up doing. Um, once I kind of had that high level overview, I had made lots of notes of like what's going on and figuring out where numbers were at. Here was where I really needed to figure out like, what is it that I actually need to work on and how can I keep this organized? So I broke this down um, very simply. You can see I have a base level category of kind of the task I need to go for. Whether or not the task was completed or whatever the bill was, has it been paid? How much is owed on that bill? Have I acquired power of attorney or provided it for that, that particular institution? Um, do I have permission to talk to that company or are they awaiting a document, a fax, whatever it is? Do, do I have to mail them something? Do they have an online account? There were many cases where many of the accounts I had for my parents, um, they just never had set up online accounts. They were making manual payments over the phone, things like that. So this is very, very important. If you wanted to be able to go set this up for them, you could manage some of this and potentially do it without even providing the power of attorney. And at least that way you'd have access to it. So you don't have to sit there with like your mother or father over the phone being like, yes, they have permission and just draining tons of hours of time. The other thing was determining for the bills that they do have, are they on auto pay? And this could include both debt and expenses. I found out that many things like, for example, the water bill was something that only comes in quarterly. And whenever that comes in, my mother would have to manually write a check and mail that in. And when I called the water company to find out, hey, are they late? Of course, yes, they were late because they hadn't paid that. And it was just one of many, many things that she was dealing with and not being able to take care of, which is why obviously I had to come in to do all of this in the first place. The other thing was making notes on behalf of anything that I was working on. So let's kind of go through this and see how I broke it down. So the first thing was anything like tolls they owed, um, car bills, excise tax, anything owed to the city. The next thing was medical bills, any medical groups, just anything medical in general. I removed all of the names and information, but I had a bunch of little tiny, like 15, $30, like all these little medical bills that some of which maybe had already been paid and we just had receipts left behind and, and, and documents. But in a lot of cases, there were some bills that were just very recent that hadn't been paid yet that I wanted to go through and make sure were covered. The next thing was all the debts. So in this case, they had a hearing aid, they had a mortgage, they had multiple credit cards, personal loans, and even a consolidation loan. So I made notes of which ones were paid, which ones I had um, power of attorney access to, and which ones I still had to like say mail or fax something in in order to get access to. I would also know whether or not I could log into an online account. So for example, with Discover Card, I was able to, for example, set up an online account and reset my mother's password, make sure I could get into all that stuff. And I was easily able to go in and you know get access so I could make payments and see transactions and see everything that was going on. The other thing was any banking, right? I don't have any notes here at, um, under my category, but this could be maybe if they have multiple checking accounts or savings accounts. In my case, my mother had a savings account at one institution and a savings account at another. So we actually went and closed out one of those savings accounts, 
got a bank check and then deposited it into the other bank. So these are things that you just wanna look out for and make sure you have taken care of. Beyond that, it was all the regular expenses. As I've gone over, they had some lingering things like Amazon Kindle, Sirius XM, they were paying for an OnStar subscription, and then it's all the other basic things that you look at. As well as you have a car loan and auto insurance. Um, I would make notes, as you can see I left here as an example, I found out their annual renewal was actually due in about 10 days from the time I called. So I figured what better, not, what better time to actually switch them to a new provider and maybe get them a better rate or a discount um, over the provider that they were using. Beyond that, it was figuring out a list of what's needed for the sale of the home. We need to get a dumpster, get carpets replaced, get the rooms painted, get the electric work done, get their cabinets fixed. And this could obviously add up to quite a bit depending on what you need to do in the house. And then I also had kind of my main to-do list. So really this was additional things that I needed to do. So this could be calling my CPA about doing taxes, calling the carpet company to schedule the appointment so I know when they're coming to install the carpets, calling the medical office, calling another medical office, we decided to look into another phone company about switching their phones because both my sister and my mother had a very old phone that was like due for an upgrade. I you know, had to call the insurance company for the car. I had to buy my sister a new car. That was a whole other process, right? All these different things, making sure bills are up to date and all these different things. And you could use this as an example just to mark down what's being completed and what you still need to work on. So anyway, I have been working on all this for literally the last three weeks and I thought I'd make this video because I know for many of you out there, you might be dealing with a circumstance where your parents just might be getting older, you could be dealing with someone in your family who has dementia, whatever it is, and I wanted to create this because I think for a lot of people, when they hit this point in their lives and they have to come in and take over for this, um, it's going to be very stressful, and that's definitely how I felt. Luckily, I was in a position, because of the fact that I'm self-employed, I actually was able to literally stop doing any of my work I didn't have to answer to a boss and I actually went and just did all this stuff within a span of about three weeks. I literally called every single one of these institutions. I organized probably hundreds if not God knows how many documents and just went through and completed as much of this as possible in the quickest span that I could. And in my case I was in a time crunch because um, me and my wife have our first baby on the way at the end of April, so I was like, I need to get this done now. I didn't want to be in a circumstance where I could not take care of this. Now, in your case, if you are working a full-time job, obviously it would just be kind of chipping away at these things a little bit at a time, right? And utilizing that lunch break to the very best of your ability, because as you know, most companies are gonna be open during like that nine to five hour. So you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of that the best way that you can every single day, chipping away at all the things that you might need to do if you are taking over in a circumstance like this. So anyway, I know that this isn't like the normal video that I might produce here on my channel, but I thought I would do this again because I just realized for really most people, at some point in your life, you're probably gonna run into something like this, whether or not it's with a grandparent or a parent, and you're gonna have to take over for someone that no longer can do it. And that's what I had to do, and I thought this would be helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Below in the description, I'll leave a link to both of these documents, and if you wanna make a copy, just go in here and hit File, make a copy, and this will copy it into your own Google Drive, and you can kind of take over and go from there. Anyway, if you enjoyed this content, feel free to throw me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And again, thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who might be dealing with some of this stuff with your parents, I totally relate, and I wish you all the best of luck.